Number five recommended food is Aquamaster. Really good for color, but it's not great to feed all of your fish. I would just feed it to a few select fish. You really groom and you really pamper that you keep up on the water changes because if you don't keep up on the water changes, they, it will get your fish sick. It will get your fish sick. So um, good food for color, but not the safest thing to use. My number four recommended food is New Life Spectrum. New Life Spectrum Jumbo Fish Formula. This is what I use, the floating formula. All my fish love it. Um, I like to power feed my fish. I like to see them, you know, big and bulky and real muscular. So um, this is good food to fatten your fish up. Again, this too leaves a lot of waste in the tank. It claws pumps up, so you got to keep up on your water changes. Um, really good food, though. Coming in at number three, the blood red parrot, Hikari. Man, this food gives me great results for my flower horns. I don't trust any flower horn food where it's a flower horn on the bag. Most of that food is not good for flower horns. This food I haven't had any trouble with at all so far. Um, it's the safest thing I've used for them. It's also great for my red mammoths. And I feed it to my sickers also when I don't have anything else left. And haven't had any problems with it at all. Coming in at number two is regular old cyclic gold. Cyclic gold is classic. Everybody knows about cyclic gold, but what you may not know is that it's great for breeding. This is the perfect food to use for breeding. If you have a bonded pair of fish who you want to breed constantly, cyclic gold is the way to go. And coming in at number one, we have hard boiled eggs. I feed the egg yolks to any fish I want to power feed. So all my Super King Midas and all of my marble finistratus, any fry I have, they are eating boiled eggs. They're eating the egg yolks. I feed the egg whites to my veteran fish, everything that's adult age and breeding size, and they love it. Not only do they love it, this is the best food I've ever used. I mean, simple, simple. Straight out of the refrigerator. I mean, I'm vegan myself, so I don't eat eggs, but it's the cheapest thing you can use. I went to the dollar store. For the first time, I, I bought these and got them for $1.35. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy how I go through a dozen of eggs a week. So I end up buying four dozens of eggs, and I only paid $7 for them. So, um, again, hard-boiled eggs. Get on the eggs. I guarantee results. I'm going to show you a before and after shot of my Super Red Texas. I don't know if you've seen him in my old videos, but he is amazing now. All because of egg whites. These are the Super King Midas babies, ready to get down on some boiled eggs. As you can see, the boiled eggs cloud the water immediately. Depending on how many you use, you probably have to do water changes every two to three days. But I highly recommend this for fry, any fry of any kind. They'll grow super fast. As long as you keep up on your water changes, this is the best method to grow your fish out as fast as possible. King Mighty and Queen Elsa are about finished. I don't think she's gonna lay anymore. She's a really old fish. He's getting up in age also, so these are the last of the Mohicans. What you see is what you get. I got about two more batches left. And uh, those are growing really fast also. But I'll give you guys an update video along with my kids in it. They, they love the fish room and they're gonna end up taking over the YouTube channel soon. Here we have the marble finestratus. These guys are very rare in the US. I'm very proud to have these fish. Can't wait to see them grow out to their full potential. I only give them egg yolks because I want them to grow much faster and they prefer the egg yolks over the egg whites.
Here are a few of my hybrids, all eating egg whites. As you can see, I've been doing a lot of breeding. All these guys, I cannot wait till they get to their full potential. And they all grow out. Plan on putting them all together in a 350 gallon. Just imagine a tank full of fish the size of umbies. But as colorful as flower horns, that's what I'm working on right now. Here are more of my hybrids. A few red mammons. Um, I is Lanham. And my female Midas mammon, King Midas mammon, paired off a few days ago. Her pouch is down. Look at the body on her, all from the egg whites. Highly recommend the egg whites. For this first method of hybridizing, I like to call this cluster hybridizing. We have a tank full of fish from different species that are also obviously sexes, so they have no choice but to pair off eventually with something they traditionally wouldn't pair off with. Here I have a female Midas mammon who paired off with my male Redis lanum. And this is a very interesting pairing right here something I would have never done on purpose but it's fun to find out what type of fish take a liking to each other when you put them in this type of situation. I'm now going to go over perfect base hybrid pairings and pairing do's and don'ts. Here we have a perfect color base hybrid pairing. I say perfect because when it comes to flower horns or any pairing of any fish, you don't ever want to clash colors. You don't want to clash colors. So people usually think if you take two colorful fish and pair them together, you'll get something even more colorful. And that's not always the case. This colorful male and almost colorless female will have very colorful fry and they'll have an even distribution of pearls and color. This female is considered clean. In Thailand, this is what makes it very easy for people to inject their fish and make them any color they want to. So this is why you get fish shipped over to the US and their colors fade because they start out with a clean color based fish and you can inject that flesh tone with any color you want. Also something you want to do when you're breeding fish is to give them, motiva give them motivation to stick together. So this divider with the other male on the other side serves as a distraction until it's time for them to lay and they'll stick together and that'll limit the aggression between the pair. Now I'm going to talk about how I maximize my breeding space and I assess my hybrid's fertility and sterility. So in this 125 I have four pairs of hybrids. I always like to use red mammoths because the red mammoth females usually lay like clockwork. They lay eggs every two weeks and they are the most reliable fish to hybridize with to assess your fishes. Uh, sterility or fertility. So, the only downside to that is red mammons, red mammon females can lay dud eggs just like any other hybrid female. They can lay eggs and they can be dud eggs. So, if you've already assessed your female's fertility first, I know each and every one of these female red mammons, I know that they are all fertile and they lay good eggs. Once you know that, then you can pair them with males that are mysteries. So I have each male hybrid paired with fertile female mammoths. So that way, whichever batch of eggs does not hatch, I know that that male is probably not fertile or he's not fertile yet. Now when it comes to comfort flower horns, they can become fertile later in life when they're about the size of this adult male Cuban here. It's a very mature male, pure Cuban cichlid, and he's paired with the female umbi. 
when they get that size, conifers are usually fertile around that size, if they're ever gonna be fertile. Around 10, nine to 10 inches is when you can try them again. It's usually the best time to try them, but they can be fertile anywhere from five to 10 inches. Usually with white odd conifers like these, they are not fertile, They're usually not fertile. Unless you have a odd pairing, which is the Cuban sickle. The Cuban sickle is the oddball. Cuban sickles have white eyes or light colored eyes. So usually any comfort flower horn or flower horn period with red eyes are fertile. But since these are comforts and a very unique type of comfort, they all have white or orange eyes. So I can't take that into consideration when it comes to these guys. I can't worry about the color of their eye. But just so you all know, if you're breeding flower horns, if they don't have a red eye, don't waste your time. That's what I would say usually. So um, these are very rare. I don't know anyone else with Cuban hybrid flower horns like these. These are a very unique mixture of flower horns. Thank you.